Top of the top of the headline, top of the agenda this week, Langer Watch. Now, where to start with this? It started with some rumblings about some player discontent. If I can start with this. Langer then comes out and he says, you're walking on against India. We're trying to win a test match. And one of our players walks on with a toasted sandwich in his hand. I spoke to the player about it at length yesterday. I said, how do you reckon it looks, mate? It's not, is that not something I should say? That's how it started. We're thinking, well, good point. It's fucking village walking on the field with a with a cheese toasty. Mm. The fuck's doing that? Mm. Manus, Manus is doing that. Manus is doing that. Manus is doing that. Manus is doing that. <laughs> That's come out since it has been Manus, and that was um, that was paying a dollar ten. Um, and then since then, it's just sort of rolled on a little bit more. And well, that was the that was the report from Andrew Wu and Chris Barrett, mm. colleagues of ours, friends of ours, and that was the anecdote they chose to run with a broader question around. How the players are going with Langer. Yeah. It was an interesting anecdote to use because I'm not sure that's really the anecdote. That it's, one, it's a fair anecdote to Langer because you read that and you go like, what the fuck is Manus taking a toasted cheese sandwich onto the field? Right. Right? But the yeah. broader thing was about like, hmm, Langer, see, they seem a bit on the, Langer seems a bit on the nose with the players, a bit of leakage going on, and it kept going. Exactly right, mate, because when that, came, when that quote specifically came out, I was like... Players are kind of fucking blowing up here. I see if, Langer's If point. I saw that in a third grade game, someone walking on the field with a sandwich in their pocket, I'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? This is. It's a test match. Yeah. No wonder we lost the Gabba. Cunts having a fucking sandwich. Exactly. A bat pad. Yeah. <laughs> Langer's doing his job, not tickling their stomachs. And then it's sort of and then it's sort of transpired since then. Now, we've been very fortunate. <laughs> fortunate. We've we like just coincidentally bumped into a couple of players the last few days. And fuck. Some guys have been pretty keen to talk about the discontent that's been happening in the camp, and fucking Langer's in trouble here. Mate. Langer's Langer's gone, like, and it seems now like this is, you know, you're taking one word over another, I suppose, because Langer's been coming out in the media and he's been saying like, well, it's all that coaching and I'm doing a good job and you know the environment I can learn all this sort of stuff, and uh, fuck, it doesn't seem like the players are too keen for that because this seems like it's been going on for years and there's a fucking mutiny happening. And uh, he's in trouble. You know, we're sort of sort of new to... We're, we're not breaking anything. I'm not breaking We're anything. not breaking shit. I am breaking shit. I but, fucking tell jokes. But, That's but what I do on the internet. <laughs> All right? I am breaking shit. Lang is gone. Breaking... <laughs> he's gone, mate. Well, he's a powerful dude. Oh, I look, if I'm, dead, if I'm dead in the week, like, <laughs> you'll know where to look. It's been extraordinary <laughs> to hear some of the things that players have been saying off record. Mm. And while people often leak to the media, it's usually a player or two. It's usually a maverick maybe. But this has all the hallmarks of a combined effort. Mm. And in relation to this thing with Langer, where the PR war is on in Mm. fucking earnest, Mm. um, it reminds me of like, our old head of corporate affairs at Telstra in his office, he had a, um, it was, this was communications. He had a big, a big um, like print and it said, loose lips sink ships. Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> and like the concerning element to this with Langer versus the players yeah. is not necessarily what's being said yet. Yeah. It's who is saying it and the way it's playing out. Yeah. So like there was leakages about Langer first up in, in yeah. Wu and Barrett's article. Yeah. There was a follow-up article from Wu where players had leaked that Langer had got onto WhatsApp and said, don't leak. Yeah. So they've leaked on a leak. Yeah. Fuck a leaky ship. And a few days on, not one player has come out privately or publicly to defend Langer. Mm. It has all the hallmarks of it being a coordinated Mm. effort. Mm. Um, And some of the stories that are, that are emerging and and some of the views Mm. of players are astonishing Mm. in their um, contempt and it's yeah. n- it goes back a long way, and yeah. I, my question is, how does it reconcile? Because in response to all these leakages, Langer has gone onto Media Street now. Mm. He's given a lot of interviews, mm. and while there's a lot of airy notes out there about him being willing to adapt and change, mm-hmm. the large majority of it, when you sift through it, is that he's a good coach and he has his way of doing things, and so. They're on a warpath, these guys, and it's yeah. it's extraordinary. I've got no interest, by the way, in like anyone losing their job, let alone the coach of the Australian cricket team. I got no, I don't fucking know Justin Langer. He doesn't know me. Mm. <laughs> he knows you a little bit. 
<laughs> He's been looking at my stats. Yeah. I might get a game with all these fucking tours that are happening at the mm. same time. Um, so I got, so first of all, I got no interest in anyone that in any level of that, but like the, the, I, when you start piecing a few things together, because this for me, I don't know about you, mate, but I had absolutely no idea about any of this. And he's been coached the Australian team now since Sandpaper, which is what I want to say three years ago. Is that right? And like, so I had no idea out of this, but then within the space of a week from this article that you're talking about, that you referenced from um, Sydney Morning Herald, uh, and then all of a sudden it's like, ah, now I'm piecing a few things together that the players are fucking, they're just off him. And then you start thinking about like his style of management or, and I use management deliberately because for me, he's like, it reminds me so much of like a football manager where like he is, who, who the fuck knows who a cricket coach is ever? Langer's like almost the most famous person in that team because he comes out all the time and he speaks about, He's, he's always doing press conferences. Like Trevor Bayliss won the World Cup with England, right? How often did you ever hear from Trevor Bayliss? Almost never, you know? And so he, it just reminds me of this, like, this style of coaching slash management where he's actually a football manager, where it's all about like tacticians and it's like, it's, it's all about JL. Crisis at the club. Mourinho yeah. has lost the dressing room. Yeah. The players won't play for him anymore. <laughs> you know? The manager is out of touch. Player power is out of control. The players are briefing the media. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. The manager is subtweeting. Like it's... Uh, <laughs> And how do managerial crises end? Oh, in well, the they always, EPL? always end well, mate. What's mm. going to happen next is the board's going to come out. He's got full backing. Then he loses. He, he gets a, it's a tough one more draw at West Brom away, and then he's gone. That's what happens. So when Australia go to West Brom, they go to the Hawthorns next week. <laughs> but mate, that this this South ends, Africa is the Hawthorns. This ends this ends by him losing his job, which I, I take no pleasure in saying because the guy's fucking employed by Cricket Australia, and that's a great job to have and stuff. But like this doesn't end in him. He's been the coach of three team. He's been coach of this team for this amount of time. It appears anyway from what players are saying, which again might might be inaccurate, but it seems what they're saying is this has been going for ages, and it's now just spilling out, and there's a fucking cascading effect of this like the, all these stories of discontent that like we have no right in hearing. We're just fucking. Players are keen to chat for some reason. And so yeah. this this only end this doesn't end in him like learning and changing and then they get a good result in South Africa, I don't think. And and then it's like, ah, oh, that's all good. We forgive you. The camp's not happy. That 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 Australian camp is not happy. And it's it makes sense because it, they never felt something something was not quite right this summer. You know, I just just felt like there's nothing something quite there. And I, it, it makes sense with compounded with like, you know, hotel quarantine shifting around huge series against India. They're losing the stress, this intensity of this coach that apparently the team fucking hates it. it all these little jigsaw piece puzzles are sort of coming together. Yeah. I think that, um, jigsaw when puzzle you, pieces rather <laughs> when, fucking idiot. when you, <laughs> <laughs> when you say, uh, when you say he's gone, I, that's the only thing I would temper because, I don't mm. think historically Cricket Australia has had, uh, you know, or any great shakes in um, pivoting decisively and quickly when something is quite clearly wrong because mm. something's been quite clearly wrong with Justin Langer for a long time if you believe the players uh, and nothing really seems to have happened. I mean, he lives and dies by results. The South Africa series will be the most kind of meaningful thing in relation to what happens next and that's why i firmly believe that we will see a collapse and faff lifting a trophy with his shirt off <laughs> uh, and it will be bookended sandpaper will book i don't know if you've seen this Pez, but the, the the trophy this year for the australia South africa series is actually just a towel yeah fair enough yeah well we know who will win that <laughs> but <laughs> Not sure so, I, I, you know what what worries me and i'll say it like as a as someone who follows australian cricket is that this may actually because of the politis like because of the political animals involved in it at the highest level, like this will be a slow car crash. Yeah. You know, because the stories that we're hearing are that like it is um, uh, untenably toxic yeah. in the side. Yeah. But because of um, issues around probably around contracts and, and careerism and people wanting to keep their jobs and all those things that are probably understandable, uh, no one's going to step aside, you know. Mm. And so we're going to be as sort of fans or followers consigned to just – Watching this, yeah, mate. You know, degenerate that's, slowly, and that's what I don't want to see. That's the worst I'd, case scenario. I'd rather, like, you know, we might wake up in a couple of days and they've smoked the peace pipe. Now, judging from what you know, Maybe, and yeah. everything's fine, so you got to be careful. Yeah. But like, judging from the way people are talking, it's it's gone. It's it's, gone. it's a relationship that is gone. Yeah, trust is gone, mm. and uh, and the mutiny is on. Yeah, well, it's I, I'm thinking like from an, an English perspective, when what they would want. 
is for him to stay for the Ashes because, like, it seems to me that the players are desperately unhappy, desperately so. And, and you know, again, back to the football analogy where, like, we all know that the manager's getting sacked. You know, we all know it's coming. they got to fucking piece some puzzles together. Who's available? You know, is Thomas Tuchel available? Yeah. You know, like, Who's Tuchel here? Yeah. <laughs> Andrew Gillespie. Oh. <laughs> Gillespie, yeah. yeah. It's successor PSG. And, uh, but exactly. couldn't do the game. <laughs> couldn't do the job. <laughs> Who's Neymar? Yeah. Fuck, I don't know. Yeah, Alex Strike is his PSG. <laughs> um, and and uh, you know we we all know where this is going and how long do we have to wait for the change to happen? Now Langer's still got twelve months left on his contract, which will be after the Ashes. That's a bit like eighteen, yeah. So can the is the team going to go all the way? Well, he came out yesterday and said he wants to go through to India twenty twenty two. He sees that as the Everest. So he he's already stamped his foot down and said, I want to stay beyond my contract. Uh, and what's interesting about this is harking back to your point earlier around the position of a coach in a side. Now, like, I always thought like John Buchanan gave great guardrails to that Aussie side that was that were excellent and, yep. and challenged them. Of course, he had Mavericks like Warren who didn't appreciate it at all. Right. Uh, when I hear Langer speak and the sort of advice that he likes to push out there and, and whatnot, and you know he's entitled to do his coaching however he likes, mm. and he's an expert coach in terms of how long he's been around and stuff, but it, it sounds a lot more like a footy coach where the team is kind of um, built around the manager and built around the coach. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and that in fact the coaching industry, or at least as it's led by him, wants to raise itself to that position mm. where the coach becomes a critical part of the side. And it's just the nature of cricket isn't doesn't lend itself to that. You know, a footy coach creates systems and pre-planned lines. It tells you, shows you where to run. It creates tactics before the game that mm. you sort of ingest and you execute. Yeah. Cricketers have to think on the run. You mm. know, pain is there. Pain decides who's bowling. Pain decides where the fields are. Pain has to manage a player being taken off bowling if he's not happy. You know, it, the, the captain has a much bigger role in that. Uh, and so I don't, you know, I think Australian cricket is getting to a point where Langer is sort of, Positioning himself as almost as important, if not more, you know, than it's the, like that than for the ages. team. Yeah, and and you sort of understand this more when like you get the outside perspective of what how a lot of people from the UK um, consume the test. Mm. Where like, oh, Lang is David Brent. Yeah, you know what I mean. And mm. like, because it just sounds like he's he's the rock star of the team. He mm. he he's the focal point. Mm. And I wonder, do you know England's cricket coach now? Um, Chris Silverwood. Yeah, uh, I looked it up. Love um, to do it yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. Yeah. I've just googled up. it. Yeah, yeah. I, I actually I read yeah. it. I read it literally yesterday because I was yeah. doing thing for India or England, and um, that's the first time I knew that. Yeah, and I, I know Mickey Arthur's a Sri Lankan coach because he's obviously used to do Australia. Anyway, the thing is, this is a convenient conversation because players are talking so. And, and Langer said this yesterday. Oh, it's my turn to um, get whacked with the stick and stuff, and we may actually be in that phase, and they come out, and it's all good. The the problem is, like the fundamental problem is that it seems as though the players have decided and have yeah. felt for a long time that they don't really want to work with him. Mm. And the question is, how will that reconcile? How does that reconcile? Does Langer have the personality to change? He's certainly suggesting he can adapt in the press. Mm. He often follows it up with comments that suggest otherwise. Mm. Uh, but um, to my mind, mm. uh, you know, it just seems to be a slow car crash. They're on the wall path. I don't know where it goes. It's so funny, man. Just in preparation for this show, just like letting, like just kind of reading it from outside perspective. And I was like, nah, I reckon, I reckon, and this is, this remains true. I think Lang has done a great job to this point. Yeah. I think like from where he picked it up with South Africa and Sandpaper, and I think he's like taken it to this point, maybe through some gritted teeth with the players from half time. But I was sort of like going, I was sort of going into this being like, um, you know, I kind of worry about like the leadership and the team. And, you know, if Marnus has taken, you know, sandwiches onto the field, that fucking is village. It's naive and it's young mm. and it's dumb. But everyone, we even heard just recently, it didn't quite happen like that as well. Like so the way, so even, the way even that story's being presented literally, is like. Literally bumped into a player on the street outside my apartment and just got to talking. And I was like, oh, fuck, this is way worse than what I thought. This <laughs> is fucking way worse. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's, I guess that's where I'm coming from anyway with it. But, um, yeah. and, and like, who knows? Who the fuck knows what's going to happen? I well, don't know. The South Africa and New Zealand squad split will be interesting because, mm. like, there's suggestions that sort of, you know, while Langer is the tough old school guy who makes you run 100 hundreds and doesn't tickle your stomach and, mm. you know, Australian flag draping and all that kind of gear, be tougher. Um, Why'd you fucking review that Finchie you know, yeah, the test? Yeah. Then you've got the, um, and he, he probably won't appreciate us suggesting this, but the the softer, more personable touch of Andrew McDonald, who seems to um, be respected by a lot mm. of the players yeah. um, for his ability to be approachable. 
you know, yeah. and chat with him. Yeah. And, uh, you know, half the team are going over with him to New Zealand. 